What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Weed and Talking MMA podcast. My name is Jared. I'm here with my co-host, Paul. What up? This is our 10th episode. Can you believe that shit, Paul? 10 episodes in already. Hell yeah. And we've been getting a lot of new viewers lately, a lot of new listeners. So if you're brand new to the podcast, first I want to say thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks to everybody else. Thanks to all of our subscribers. We really appreciate it. Yeah. If you're brand new... This is what we do. The name says it all. My friend Paul and I, we live in Las Vegas. We're former amateur combat athletes. I was into boxing. Paul was into wrestling. We both still do a lot of training today. We're super fans of mixed martial arts and cannabis. Fuck yeah. Being as we live in Vegas, we got a a hands-on experience right here to see a lot of things going down in the UFC, in in amateur as well. There's Tough Enough and a lot of other uh, smaller promotions right here in Vegas. And... I started this podcast mainly because I was kind of tired of the uh, all the journalist stuff that's out there. I mean, journalist podcasts are cool, but um, as they'll readily tell you, they're not allowed to be fans. And we wanted to do a podcast where fans could talk about MMA, smoke some weed, have a good time, and kind of bring you that unique Vegas perspective that we can get out here. So keeping that unique Vegas perspective in mind, we've got legal recreational cannabis out here for just over a year in July. Fucking yeah. awesome is that, dude? Yeah, it's been crazy to think it's already been a year yeah man it's going by pretty quick and to to all the naysayers that definitely ain't watching this show but if you happen to hear yeah the world didn't end when we got legal cannabis yeah how about that so we got good shit that's available these days (laughs) uh we're smoking on some slimer this is by a a local uh grower in cannabiotics um if you watch my other channel the las vegas marijuana experience on youtube i got a review of cannabiotics they're one of the top growers out here they're real good shit yeah um never really had any bad shit from no you you can't go wrong with any any strain they're they're kind of pricey but they're worth it um their weed's always cured good it's uh it's flushed well tastes great they got a, some uh strains that are unique to them uh this we're smoking on now is a slimer it's a sativa hybrid it's pretty good uh, we also got one of their cartridges today. Actually, they do some uh, some oils as well. This is a Kush Mountain OG cartridge. This is a it's an indica. It's like a seventy five percent THC, and it's got really high terpenes, like uh, like a thirty three percent limoline. Yeah, you can really taste it when you hit yeah. that, huh? Um, we got some got the rig here. What do we got in the rig today, Paul? I forgot. Uh, just. It's so a Tahoe OG? Yeah, just some Tahoe OG. So we got, we got a decent selection of cannabis, to put it uh, mildly. We had a little bit of CBD here, but... Yeah, but man. that paper is bullshit. Yeah, if you guys are listening, man, if you're in, in watching... That little plastic, if like, you get your fucking paper. Yeah, if you get your, sucks. Your, uh, your shatter, so much better on wax paper. This is plastic. Yeah, that plastic shit sucks. Yeah. Especially if it's, like, not... You can see on camera here, there's still stuff in there. We can't get it off. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. Yeah, I it sticks to the paper. It. Shit's bullshit. You can't load Whatever. it in the ring. Whatever, though. It's nothing to really bitch about. Because, yeah. like I said, we live in Vegas. It's great here with the weed. Fuck and yeah. uh, it's great here with the fights, man. Hell yeah. Now, last night's card wasn't here in Vegas, but it was pretty dope. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot of good finishes in that card as well. It was, man. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of well-known fighters... With some statements, both good and bad. I mean, we opened up, we had yeah. Joanne Calderwood, uh, Joanne she 2.0, as she likes to call herself now, getting her first submission victory. She mm-hmm. lives here in Vegas now. She's moved here, trains out of Syndicate MMA right here in town. Yeah, that uh, Eric Anders knockout kick was pretty intense, too. That, that was, was pretty beautiful, crazy. Man. Unfortunately, uh, Ellen Berger had his last fight last night as well. He had his little farewell after getting knocked out, which, I mean, normally they probably wouldn't interview a guy getting knocked out but he's from nebraska he's from nebraska and he he didn't get like like no he he wasn't like alistair overeem interviewed by joe rogan yeah yeah so that was good and honestly paul i was really glad to see ellenberger retire i've been a fan of his over the hill for sure and and he's been he's been getting knocked the fuck out lately and i (coughs) fighting is a sport where i just i don't like to see you keep getting ko'd like if he wasn't going to retire, I would hope he'd at least go down to uh, to another promotion where he wouldn't be fighting so many killers. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. So, But good for him to be able to go out at home at least. It sucks you got to go out on a loss, but, dude, that's how most fighters go out. Let's, to be let's honest, be real. people in sports across the board 
very few people retire with a win. Yeah, you got to get lucky. Because, you know... You're going to be and, pulling and, off a John well, and Elway. Well, here's the thing, too, is like... When, when you're winning, it's hard to walk away from anything oh, when you're a professional yeah. athlete. You know, like... Yeah, even more how, so. How do you tell yourself, oh, yeah, that was it, but you won. You know? Yeah, the winning just validated your entire existence of yeah, doing like, what you do. But I won. What do you mean I'm done? I just Can't beat quit. that guy. Right. Or I beat that team, you know? Absolutely. But, I mean, it sucks to go out on a loss, but I'm telling you, man... <laughs> Most people end up going on a loss because they have no other option, you know. For sure. He had other options. He could have fought a couple more times. And he's a he big just, name. He could have got picked up by yeah, someone else. He could have gone to Bellator. He could have gone for to him, though, Risen. Being able to make that decision, like, you know, even after like a super emotional thing, like getting KO'd in front oh, of your real. hometown, to still be able to get up, and be like, hey man, shit happens, you know. Thanks to all my fans, all that good stuff, you know. Yeah, that's good. Good for him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, good for him on his career. He never made it to the tip top, but, you know, he was in the top. Yeah, he was in, the, good. in that top conversation for yeah, quite a while. Yeah, he was always, you know, he wasn't necessarily a journeyman, but he was a, he was a definite contender early yeah, in his career. He was hot for a minute, man. Yeah. He'd come out with that power and just yep. lay him people, lay people out. He would lay people out, fuck man. out, yeah. I mean, they called him the juggernaut for a reason. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it declined here at the end like it does with most fighters, but there's no denying his accomplishments in there. Were See, very this impressive. card had a little bit of everything, though, because you had, like, Ellenberger, who was coming to the end of his career. Then you guys got a got, guy like uh, Mickey Gall, who mm-hmm. picks up another <clears throat> momentum is like, <clears throat> part of his career, man. Yeah, I mean, after a big flight. loss, being real, like, seriously kind of, like, exposed in he that Brown fight, you know? A bit, and then. Yeah. Turns around, gets that quick submission last night. I mean, that's big against for him. A, a solid fighter. George Sullivan is a solid journeyman fighter in the UFC. Like that dude, he's skilled. Uh-huh. You know, he's he's been around a minute, but that it's Mickey Gall's sixth fight, and he's just been a, off like what a year now. I think yeah. it's about a year since the Randy Brown fight. Interesting right? little story yeah. though. I heard during the week was that he was supposed to open the main card, and he was on Aaron Hawani's podcast on ESPN, and he said that. The mm. website had it wrong that he wasn't opening the undercard. He was opening the main card. Hmm. I was and surprised. Ariel he asked him. He was like, card, "Is yeah. there, is that one of those situations where you could call Dana up and figure it out?" And he said, "No." So, that's, maybe he fell out of favor. That's what I'm thinking. Like maybe with Brown. Like yeah, Mickey Gall went and beat you know Sage, and he beat uh, who was that other guy from looking for a fight? He beat too. Um, well, he you know he's beaten guys from right. looking for a fight, <clears throat> stupid fights like he that. earned his name. He's with had the a CM lot of Punk gimmick victory. fights, yeah. you know. But it's been a little gimmicky, and, but he's got skills. He's got yeah, legit. He, oh yeah, he's got legit skills. He's, got legit he's had skills. like those gimmicky fights, and then when he fought someone real like Randy Brown, Randy Brown really exposed him, you know. Yeah. And I think to Dana that kind of was like, all right, I'm gonna put this kid on the back burner for a while, throw him back on the undercard because we really don't know what he has. See that Dana's so fucking fickle. Yeah, he, I mean, oh, super, super. And he's he's the first guy just, to shit on his oh, own yeah. fighters, 100%. be it publicly or privately. Yeah. So that wouldn't surprise me at all if he if he lost a bit of favor uh, with the big man and then wound up on the prelims. Because I was shocked. He's despite it only being a six pro fight, he's got that big name, you know, from the looking for the fight show and from you know he beat CM Punk. Yeah. You know, back he's, when that meant a little bit more North than Cut. the second time he beat, beat Northcut, who yeah. had the same name. Mm-hmm. He Northcut was getting that that shine. So, you know, there was another fighter on the card that really turned me into a fan last night. That was uh, a Corey Sandhagen. Um, yeah, he's one of the, <laughs> what a tough. Seri- yeah. yeah, what a fucking. He had some serious like mental and physical toughness. I mean, just like everybody else, when when he got when uh, Alcantara got that that arm locked up, I was like, well, that's it. Yeah. And then it wasn't it. And then I was like, well, the ref's gonna stop that. He must be verbally tapping. No. And then he bent his arm back even more. Then he changed the angle, bent his arm back more, uh, and then he came out and beat the ever living know. crap out so, of it. So, with what <clears> he <throat> said at the end of the fight, saying that his arm did pop. Yeah, he said his arm popped. Is that a yeah? Is that bad refing though, or is that just a guy being tough and being able to push? I don't it? think it's bad refing. Fighters fight with broken foot. Let's look at Demetrius Johnson. He had a broken foot. Should the fight have been stopped when his foot was broke and be like, "I said broken foot." True. Good point. You know, unless the fighter says. Hey, my foot's broke. I can't go. If guy verbally tapped me like shit, my arm popped, man. I, I you know, I'm done. yeah. Then cool. You wouldn't even clown on that. That's fine. Respect, but I think no. I think the ref should let that kind of stuff go. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I see you. But that kid turned me into a fan last night. I mean, I 
I'd heard about him because he, he won two fights in the UFC in nine days. He also took a fight at a weight class above on one of those. Some fucking tough shit right and there. And then he comes in against a real seasoned vet. I believe uh, Alcantara is ranked like yeah, I think he was 14th or 15th, like 14th, something like 15. that. And he's a, I mean, he's won four in a row, got four knockouts. He's a beast. Yep. He came out there and was tearing into people. Yep. And this kid just ate that entire sequence of events and then just put a beat down on him, man. Yeah, for real. That was a beat down. Well, and it's one of those situations where, like, he had the fight won, and I feel like he just went for it, like, went for it, went for it, and then, like, it was such a letdown. Like, you know, mentally, when you you fucking think you broke this guy's arm, and you think it's over, it's like, and then you're just like, get this adrenaline dump of, what the fuck, this isn't over? Like, you know? And I'm not giving him any excuse for losing that fight because he, like, in the same situation, if you had the fight, you should have finished it, you know. But still, like, you know, there could have been one of those situations where it really got to his head, you know. Mm-hmm. It it could have mentally. All right, I was just looking up and see that guy who bit. knocked out Moraga. That was a fucking nasty knockout. That was very nasty. He's a. Uh... I don't really. I'm unsure of the pronunciations, but yeah. I did a little bit that's of research before my pick <laughs> last night, and uh, he was ten. And he was undefeated coming in. Yeah, and uh, that's why I picked him in that fight. And he yeah, was fucking. He was a beast, gnarly dude. Yeah. At first, I was like, this guy needs uh, to open up. He's just taking him down, doing nothing. But he is one of those guys who seems like he's one of those, like when he gets an opening, he explodes. But otherwise, it's kind of boring. I, which is big. That's kind of like how a lot of those fighters fight a flyweight, you know, that like mm-hmm. yeah. it's a lot of it's a lot of feeling each other out and then big and then explosions. Just bursting with all their speed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for but real. that guy man, that guy looks like he could possibly do some serious damage in a now a very like playing uh, like a division where the playing field's really changed recently and a lot it more has. guys, a lot more doors are being opened for guys. You know <clears> what I mean? <throat> Cause now you're looking at a division that was once people were still to this day talking about oh they should just scrap it start over you know like oh it's just dj he just whoops everyone and then yeah, you know DJ now F- dj nobody. loses yeah, and now yeah, you're in a you're in a position where argument. there's so many possible fights in that division with dj being either it because now he's out another year possibly yeah he's out a good At six least, months yeah. for sure yeah he's got a broken foot and, and a torn lcl right so, but I wonder if it, how bad it's torn. I didn't see if it was torn off the bone or not. Let's hope it's not bad. I saw pictures of his foot, and it was... Uh, oh, the foot was gross. That was crazy. Gross. His foot was huge. Well, yeah, man, this really changes the landscape of the division, where you have guys who possibly have lost to DJ that now could possibly get to that title shot without even having to fight him. Right. You know? And that changes, that changes everything. <clears throat> because that confidence of being a champion... That let's say some guy that Henry drops the belt to somebody like Benavidez or someone like that who's fought DJ in the past, that mental change of when you're a contender to when you're a champion, it could give possibly give a guy like Benavidez who was this close to beating DJ, like you know, give him that edge Absolutely. that he needed. Or you know, there's it, br- it brings some life into division. the division, and I'm not glad. That Demetrius got hurt in any way. Oh no! But in a way, it opens up a possibility for some things to happen. Where because I think he should get an immediate rematch, but I would like him to take time off to heal up and yeah. see Cejudo defend the belt against somebody else. In the meantime, then DJ can come right back into a mm-hmm. title shot, and that keeps the division moving, and it allows DJ a minute to heal up. I think that would be great as long as it's not TJ Dillashaw. That Cejudo fights because then we're stopping the division. Then again. Yeah, then we're holding it up but again because, because what then what happens? Said. What happens if Cejudo beats Tillashaw oh, and God. never wants to come back? Right. But oh. takes the belt with him and is like, "Nah, you're gonna have to strip me," kind of like how Connor did. Then. So basically, DJ you know, would be champ again because they would be like DJ versus somebody else, in which he'd likely. You know what the UFC does beat. a lot, so like mishandling with that. Is they award people championships? They never like do a vacant title fight. This is true. Like you know, like like to the tune of like you know Aldo versus Edgar when freaking Aldo was just handed the belt. It was right. like it was like he was not even interim <laughs> champ or anything. He got knocked out by Connor, and there's up oh, here's here's yeah, a belt. There which is strange. Yeah, it's some, strange. They do some mismanagement. It's some very strange fucking decisions they make with these belts. 
we were talking about it before the podcast, but that situation with Brian Ortega where he's getting pressured to these interim title fights. I mean, yeah. now that they are fighting now on December 8th, which is big news. We've talked about that matchup before on the podcast. So, uh, But he's getting pressured by the media and everyone for not taking that fight. What was that? A month ago yeah, now? Yeah, the interim. It's like, come on, dude. Come on. You can't. These interim belts don't mean shit these days. They don't. They meant little before and now nothing since yeah. WME Endeavor has taken over the UFC. I mean, well, and since WME has taken over, we're having joke. interim champions defend their interim belts. And then we're having interim champions. While champions just lose. are still healthy. It's, cr- it's crazy. It's ridiculous. Look at the mess they created at Welterweight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was ridiculous. all completely. And on the, they didn't need to have Colby become an interim champion. Nope. Any more than they needed to strip him. Uh-uh. And none of those two things, they're polar opposites. Why did you do both? Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. They could have, their champion was well, active. And what's funny, too, is that yeah, Colby the RDA fight wasn't even a main event either. I know. It doesn't make any sense. The, their decisions have literally undermined themselves. They create yeah. and they make Colby the champion. And whether you. And then they strip him because he has a nose injury that's going to cost him one more month than what they wanted to. One month. That's it's ridiculous. absurd. And it's just as absurd as them creating the interim belt because Woodley wanted one month to heal up. Yeah. Well, here's my thing is like, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of Colby Covington, but there's no fucking way he should have got stripped of that belt. Absolutely. You, you, you got to no take... No way. And anybody listening, you, you t- take your feelings for Covington aside and just look at this situation. We've got an yeah. interim champion that they, they just told us he was the interim. Who was willing to fight a month later on the next card? Right, with a nose issue that simply needs four weeks. Yeah, it weeks, was just a quick. 30, yeah. We're talking yep. thirty days, and he could be training one month. That's what I mean when and I they say said, their nope, decisions. Strip you the belt. Mm. I understand so what because even we brought this up before though they put themselves in that situation. Right, they you created can't it. Make an interim title <laughs> fight between a, two guys who are number two and four in the division. And then have another fight where the guy who is number five is fighting number one. And then he beats number one. That yeah. makes the number one... If you beat the number one guy in the world, you are the number one contender. It's a shit show You know, with this. Well, and that would have changed things if they... Would have just never made any interim title fights. Mm-hmm. Then everything would have been everything would have been okay with everyone saying, "Oh, yes. you know, Darren Till gets to fight Woodley." Right. You know? the, the situation RDA would have beat or Covington would have beat RDA. Fine, but there would have been no belt, yep. and then Woodley would just have defended against Till. Well, here's the deal. I, it's absurd. Till's, Till's biggest thing in this fight is going to be making the weight because I don't. I think he's going to fuck Woodley up, honestly. I agree. I agree. I think he's going to beat Woodley pretty badly. I think think, Till's a monster. Well, it's not even that Woodley can't beat him. I just think Woodley's got too much going on. He's very similar to, like, when Ronda lost her title. She's had too much shit going on in her life for her to be in the gym every day. champ life is hard. Look how the things Woodley's doing. And good for him for doing it. No, no, don't get me wrong. Use your platform, my friend. Because fighting is not forever. No, The things that he's doing outside the octagon are great for his post-fight career. But they distract him for keeping the title, it's going to be rough. Yeah. It's a rough road when you're Darren Till and you're fucking, you know, just beat the number one guy in the world and you've got all this momentum and you're knocking motherfuckers out and everybody in the world's talking about you. Mm -hmm. And then you're Tyron Woodley who hasn't fought in a year and a half. You're coming off shoulder surgery. Making a movie. And you've got this fucking kid who's following you around, who's fucking, you know, he's, he's, he's fucking... He's it's the, the guy classic right Rocky now. scenario yeah, that 100%, is true to yep. life when it happens. I mean, you become yeah. that champ. You live the life. You get you get opportunities. I mean, Woodley's just made a movie. And he's then got Mr. His camp, T comes stuff. around. He's and got his commentator stuff. Right. And then Mr. <laughs> T hungry in the gym. You got Darren Till. I ain't seeing my kid. Shows up. Darren Till. I ain't seeing my wife. <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, but yeah, and it's you know what? It's best for Darren Till if he wins this fight because Darren Till does not need to be at this weight class. He wins this oh, belt. No. Darren wins. Till should be a middleweight. Well, yeah. you, we all heard the other day he said he wants to win this belt. He wants to beat uh, Colby, and then he wants to move up to middleweight and fight Robert Whittaker. And I find it very actually refreshing that he wants to be to recognize that Colby was the interim champion. Yeah. Not just ignore that that happened. Like the UFC is trying to be like, oh, it didn't happen. He's basically being like, okay, you were the yeah, interim guy, so I'll fight you too. that interim title, they, there was more than one. In, in the situation that they didn't do what they're doing in the welterweight division, 
they did in the lightweight division where there was two interim champs and a champ. Right. So it's a much different situation. Yeah, and I yeah, just like the, it. I the, like Till doing yeah. that. I no, 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 no. I, I understand. That. But what the fuck is Connor going to knock out Khabib and then go, hey, Tony, your turn. <laughs> You know, like, it's a strange situation when you have three guys who are champion already. The difference was, Darren Till wasn't champion before it right. got Thank the God. shot. Yeah. It would make it even more convoluted. Yeah. But... Can you believe these messes we're talking about? We're talking about three people in the lightweight. Who technically, who technically are the are champion, champion right now. We've got now, but two you know people what? in the welterweight who here's are, the but they're not fighting each other. Here's my, here's my, now work with me here, but here's my idea. This is best case scenario for the UFC based on other shit not going really on outside right. the So, I know Dana White's always talking shit, but he's kind of shut down the GSP possibly fighting the winner of Conor Khabib rumors. Kind of saying that mm-hmm. uh, it's something we'll be willing to do, but it's never something we talked about. But what's something we have talked about is DS3. So, uh. let's say... Nate Diaz, on November 30th, beats Dustin Poirier, who is technically, in everyone's eyes right now, the number one contender. Diaz shoots himself up there. Then Connor beats Khabib. Then you have yourself set up where Anthony Pettis needs to beat Tony Ferguson. Because if Tony Ferguson beats Anthony Pettis in like a like crazy fashion that's the next fight because you know ferguson's gonna get on that mic and he's gonna go hey you know fuck mcnuggets or whatever yeah, <laughs> you know what right. i mean i'm coming for your ass like you know and uh but if you have anthony pettis you have a guy who's an interesting point because you can't necessarily say anthony pettis deserves a title shot yet no. because he beat kiesa which is a big move you know he's top 10 guy then you beat uh you end up beating Ferguson, who's the number one guy. I think a logical next step for him would be like someone like Kevin Lee or someone like I, I that. I would agree with that. He shouldn't tech- jump into a yeah. title shot. You I can't ignore think- his, what was he, two and well, five? Well, and I just don't think he's got a big enough name yet. Like, he, of course, he's got all his outside the UFC fame that he had in the past. But I don't think Connor would be willing to give him that shot right away just beating Tony. No. I don't think he'd be like, oh, yeah, Anthony and me is the real Like, if Connor beats here. Khabib. And- but... If Anthony turns around and he beats fucking Nate or Kevin Lee or someone like that next, you know, if Connor ends up fighting GS, dude, there's so many different options, like, for this this way to turn out. Like, but best case scenario, I think, would be if Tony loses to uh, fucking Anthony Pettis. Tony. And then Connor beats Khabib. Nate beats Dustin. Then you get Connor. Then you've got Nate Connor and Nate for the lightweight for title. For the title, which <clears throat> changes everything. Because that puts so much more on the line Man, for both guys. It does. Because Nate's never been a champion. And That'd that be would fucking shoot Nate into the fucking stratosphere. If he fucking, he'd probably never fight again if he was champion. He'd probably be like, fuck Oh, me. he'd pull a Connor. I'm going back he'd... to Stockton. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> like, he's like, I'm never either. fighting again, dog. Pay me. Like, you know, like, Yeah, fuck. pay me 10 mil. You see that video of him after the press conference when they announced Connor and Yeah, Nate. I don't think it's a good Connor one. I love Nate, but I don't like, like oh my God, shit, bro. Come on, he's man. like, I thought that fool was supposed to be from a third world country or something. I smacked him. <laughs> he did say he smacked the beef. I, yeah, I, didn't like, I didn't like his whole spiel after this. <laughs> it was this hilarious, one. though. That shit was hilarious when it he said he hilarious. smacked the beef. He did. he did. Have you ever seen the video? They, I did see it, but I saw got, when it happened. It was like a couple years ago. It was if I that, remember that right. W, uh, that World Series of Fighting, uh, yeah, fight. And Nick was there too, right? It was a big old, yeah. Nick's big old fucking there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime this shit goes down, Nick's there. Like right. you know, like they always roll deep. Always. Have you ever seen Nate well, Diaz dude, just was, rolling yeah. by himself, dude? No fucking no, way. No, I was standing in the MGM at the when the press conference, the infamous b- bottle throwing press conference was. I was yeah. there outside the doors with the press conference. Then I was standing oh, at, I was standing at the well, door of the MGM and no, I was standing there when they walked in. So Nate walked in like as close as we are. Yeah. And I was like, "Yo Nate, yo Nate" cuz he was leading the whole entourage. Oh, so I was trying shit. to get a pick, right? Yeah. And he just stopped and he looked at me and he just, you know, I was like and kept going, but like Nick was there, Damn, he's probably Shields was there. Oh no, he, he was looked, like in he was no, in he mode, dude. He is he was like ready to go. He was just like, 
stuff so, right, we do. He had his whole he had his whole crew there. Nick, oh, everybody shit. came in. His trainer. Yeah. Um, it was like eight dudes, and like nobody was around. Like the casino was was like it was yeah. the middle of the afternoon. So I just like I kept following. I'm taking pictures, and I'm just like, Yo, Nick, you know, everybody. Yeah. And then we get up there, and we're all at the same door dude, oh, to wow. get into the press conference. So like I'm standing. That's why when people try to say that. Connor isn't, or that Diaz isn't that much bigger than Connor. I'm like, yes, he is, because I'm the same size deep. as Connor, and I stood right next to Diaz there, and was like, I'm like, yo, Nate, well, I'm gonna be going there, like, and fucking, you know. The thing is, people huge, look at huge, Connor dude, point. as a, big man. a lightweight. People don't remember, like, he just looks big. I mean, as a featherweight, sorry. Yeah. People remember him as a featherweight, and as as a featherweight, he was fucking towering over some motherfuckers. Like, you know, he was. Chad Mendez fight, he was way bigger than Chad, way bigger way than bigger. Jose, way bigger than fucking uh, Dennis Seaver. Oh, yeah. You know, like, a lot of those guys he fought, the only guy who was really his size was probably Dustin Poirier and Max. Other than that, everyone he fought was probably, uh, everyone at Featherweight was smaller than him. By quite a, like, quite a bit. Like, at Lightweight, that's, that's kind of where... He doesn't have as much of an advantage, I feel. No, he because... doesn't as much because he's got to cut that weight. Because yeah. he is big, man. He's a big one. He seemed to me bigger than Nick because Nick was right there too, and so and he seemed bigger than Shields too. And Shields has fought at one eighty five, and I've I mean I've talked to Jake Shields several times. Yeah. And um, I mean I talked to him then like Nate was the only one that was in like mean dog mode. Like everybody yeah. else was cool. And Nate was, or Shields was like, yeah, what's up? Not not that he knew me, but he was just like, yeah. what's up? You know. Yeah. And uh. But I was staying in there when it came out, too, like after the bottle throwing incident, and then the oh, fucking doors just burst open, and everybody came just pouring out, talking mad shit, and then just stormed through the casino and left. I wasn't even sure what happened, because I couldn't get my uh, phone working, Doesn't so I Nick hadn't seen him. Does live out here now? He's been out here a lot lately. I don't know if he lives here or what, but he's got that, he that case got pending. That, wasn't that case here? Yeah. yeah so the grand jury refused to indict him, though, so it must have been something. Well, he said that it was someone who was a stalker. That was I heard like that. Yeah. That was like stalking him and he was like stalked and slapped her. <laughs> but, wrapping, wrapping back around to your scenario, I like yeah. that. I would like to I see that. Nate I'd like Diaz, to see Connor Nate beat. Three is the best fight for the UFC yeah. for the title and it's the best money fight. I'm down I think with that. GSP Connor is a one sided fight. I I'm sorry. GSP will pick Connor apart. He'd probably just he'll just take him down. It'll be over. I don't really want to even see I'm that. I'm sorry. Like, I, mean, G- I love. GSP just I love 185 Connor. I'm one of, for goodness sake. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm one of Connor's like, like huge fans, but fucking GSP will maul him. He's so much bigger. Like, what? and I don't think Connor GSP couldn't fight at 185 if he fucking ate for the next six months. I mean, what I'd be afraid of is Connor would be like, "Fuck it, I'll meet you at 70 just to make the money." You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's Some just Keith. like. Keep uh-huh. layer Keith on top of that bowl. I could, I, I'm down with that scenario. Actually, I hope that's what happens. I mean, obviously, I hope and I, I believe that uh, Connor's going to knock out Khabib, and I, I would love to see Nate get the win too, and then set that up. Pettis get the win. I love Tony though. I just think I want to see Tony fight, but I like sport. that scenario. I like that scenario. Pettis is in a strange spot though because if he beats Tony, he doesn't really get anything out of it because he's already lost to Dustin. He's already lost to. Didn't he lose to Alvarez, too? He uh, did, yeah. He lost to Alvarez for the fucking... Uh, right after he lost his title. He lost to Alvarez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, um, yeah. so Split it's decision, like... yeah. He's in a strange place right if he beats Tony Ferguson. Because he's... He would have to fight Kevin Lee. He was the two only and person. five. You can't give him the title yeah, shot. He'd be... Man. He'd win three of his last six. Like he, Yeah. He, I mean, and it'd be good for him if he'd be on uh, the come-up. If he beats up. Tony, though, that shoots him in that top four. He's got to fight someone like Kevin He's Lee. He's got to fight that. like a Kevin Lee, yeah. Or he could have got it out of the way right then and got fucking fought Kevin Lee right there. Wish they would. Well, my, I think the best thing that anybody who fights lightweight at this fight can do is show up at championship weight. Because Kevin Lee's staying in camp. Yep. Without a contract Kevin, or yeah. a promise. Because I guarantee you, whoever shows up at championship weight, if somebody falls out, obviously they're going to get the shot. So if you're Tony Ferguson, you better fucking weigh in at 155. Because even though you're the best fighter there, if you don't show up at 155, they're giving that fight to Anthony Pettis because they're done with this fucking shit that, that happened in Brooklyn to happen again. You know? Like, this can't happen again. Right. And no. if you're Khabib, you... Fucking better 
show up on weight because he fired his nutritionist after af- after Brooklyn because he was also Max Holloway's nutritionist and he didn't even end up fighting Max. If Khabib were uh, to miss weight, I think he'd be done. Like, I don't mean like done, like he, but I mean like he'd be you want to talk about light. pissing he, off he, Dana. He, no, he wouldn't be done. He'd just make him move to one seventy. He'd ha- yeah, yeah. I mean, he'd be done with light which. Honestly, he he's not too small for. He could probably he could probably fight one seventy. I don't sure. like this too small argument that people are saying. Look at Jason Kraus last night at the Lincoln event. Like, here's a guy that used to fight one fifty five. That said, his cut took him over two months to get down to one fifty five by fight night. That yeah, is putting your body tough. and so he's putting all this strain on his body, and then he's not fueling up with fucking food. He's Putting a Cutting horrible weight. dehydration terrible, through himself, yeah. and then definitely not performing it at his max level at 155. He comes in last night against the guy who used to be 185 and puts on a clinic. I mean, he looked great. Yeah, he looked I think really it's a great good. argument for fighting somewhat closer to your natural rate. They're, wait, they're never going to stop cutting. But, yeah, dude, you don't got to go all the way down to 55, bro. You fucking. He's like six foot one, I think. Yeah, like, here's dude. the deal. There's always going to be that person in there who wants. To get smaller, to have the advantage. Like Michael Vick, for instance. I'm sorry, dude. You sh- you're six foot three. You should not be fighting Michael at 100. Michael Vick, you mean James Vick? I mean James Vick. <laughs> Michael Vick. That's so funny, dude. Michael Vick. I was like, where is he going with this? No, Michael no. Vick. That's funny. I have Michael Vick on my brain for some reason. It's Football Sunday I'm thinking about. Uh, um, no, uh, well, James yeah. Vick, man. He's six foot three, and he's fighting at 155 Fuck. pounds. Fuck. He better stay down there if he can't take a punch like that. Well, you can't take a punch like that because he's skin and bones. I mean, yeah, get some weight on yourself. I mean, he's what, definitely and, he, and to he's dehydrated. Seven. Like you can't take these punches. Like how much of that yeah. him getting knocked out is because he's been dehydrated for however long to get his big ass frame down to 155 pounds. Yeah, but he could be one of those guys who's just naturally super skinny. Well, I can't remember how old he is, but at some point he, he, he hits like past stick, 30, bro. he's not going to be able to do that. He looks small though, like. Like, he's he's got a lot of like he's got like an endurance like kind of body, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's, he's got he's like got a the, biker's body, dude. A bit, you know what I mean? Like he's he's got a real long like lanky like frame where it doesn't really look like. He's... I think he's taller than Nate Diaz. Diaz is six oh, one. Sure, he's I'm way six three. So yeah, I mean that's absurd. He's big as fuck. He and shouldn't he, be fighting. He fucking day. Timber last Timber. night, dude. That was glorious. That was glorious. I really enjoyed that. Fucking Homer Simpson, dude. Yeah. And then I liked, uh, I really liked Justin on the mic afterwards, and he said that this is fighting. I took everything he said personal, so I came out and knocked him the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Here's my problem with Gaethje, though, is like, he's going to do that to every guy at that level, but how long is he going to be able to keep it up? Because he's going to keep getting himself these bigger fights, and take a lot of damage in the big fights. I think Gaethje could he's make not... adjustments Cause and James save Vick himself a... from that shit. The uh, guy's a what a he's a good wrestler. Isn't oh, he a D one wrestler, sure. D two wrestler? He's a good wrestler, but he's never used it. If he would Here's the problem, dude. Here's the problem. There's things that happen in fighting. Like Ben Askren even said it. Once you're a wrestler and like you just start striking, you love striking, you Fall don't wrestle for a long, long time. You're really not as good as you were so before. Justin's, locked in, Justin's knocked a lot of people out. You can't deny yeah. that. He, so I, I get falling in love well, with Well, no, 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 no. That's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying his he's probably not wrestling as much in the gym as he should be. And maybe his game is really not where it used to be. That's a distinct possibility. Because it's logical. A lot right. of times, <clears throat> a lot of times, it's muscle memory. For sure, with a guy like that who's been wrestling. Yeah, he's been wrestling life. since you were a kid. It's yeah, it's a lot of muscle memory, but you got to stay sharp because of the. Yeah, because we're talking actual... the highest levels of the sport, well, though. And also, there's a difference between going through the motions and going live, and there's a lot of 50 50s and shit that happens in wrestling that, like, you got to be ready for. And if you don't wrestle, like, a lot, especially in MMA where wrestling is kind of evolved a little bit it's different because you it's, know it's, there's it's MMA kind of wrestling. Wrestling. Yeah, yeah mma wrestling kind of involves you know possibilities of getting submitted and shit like that so there's a little bit different but there's always something to getting in there and wrestling live or rolling in jujitsu you know like there's little positions that you're not going to feel if you're just going through the motions in the right. gym like For yeah sure. i'll wrestle today i'm, I'm going to take 
25 shots the uh, and then uh you know we'll do slams we're not gonna go live but we're gonna you know we're gonna drill get a good sweat going there's a difference between that and uh let's go live till you can't really until you can't anymore because that's kind of what how it goes when you end up going live you know it's right. like just keep going 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 and then you see different like positions that you wouldn't see if you're just going through the motions and drilling absolutely for sure yeah you right. and i feel like when you're at a level where you're in love with your striking you're probably just going through the motions in the gym I mean that's just from it's outside an argument perspective. To make sense there. Yeah. I don't know what it's going on in his gym because that's kind of. But he's that's in Colorado with Trevor yeah. Whitman. That, he's gym. in a striking gym. But yeah. yeah, I bet. I mean, it's a gym that's also known for striking. I mean, Trevor yeah. Whitman's a hell of a coach, hell of yeah. a striking coach. I mean, look what he's done with Rose. Mm -hmm. But and there's some killers out there. I'm seeing a lot and they of those always guys talk about his Colorado. wrestling. But when have you ever seen him wrestle Never. in any fights? Never. No, but that's a little why I'm bit, thinking a little he bit, has a, a, a little chance. bit in World Series, but he'd always use it kind of as like a point fighting thing, where it, kind of how Dominic Cruz wrestles. Like Dominic Cruz wrestles, but he takes you down and it cuts you pretty much. You know, he's like, oh, got my points, get up, let's he fight. He gets on a our take feet. down and then he wants to get you know, back up and start he, peppering it's a good, you again. It's sure. a good way to win a five round fight, you know. But. Not much scrambling going on there. I'll tell you what my hope is for Justin. If, if the scenario you laid out, you know, is where he has what it takes to beat these it's kind of lower level, but not the upper part. Maybe he does if he makes those kind of adjustments because he's choosing to fight this way. I mean, it's not like yeah. he's choosing to well, just lay it all and out. He's and saying that he had he had made a lot of changes in this camp we didn't that get to he's see been him, working though. on. We don't get to see it when he knocks somebody I out mean, that quick, which is not not a knock. No, obviously, no. great knock everyone out. Dude, but at the same right, time, he got we still don't get a chance to see cage. it. Oh, yeah. man, right. Lights out. Right, fuck. I didn't even feel sorry for Vic. He talked too much shit. Like, you, sometimes you got to earn your shit talking. Yeah, you know what and I mean? sometimes when you're you gotta James Vic, you got to fight some fucking real killers before you want to fight a guy like Justin Gaethje. Because there's, yeah, there's definitely some fights where he should have took those fucking strikes before to the chin and been able to keep moving. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't have a chin like that and fight at this level. Uh, he he needs to test his chin at 170. Because I mean, honestly, honestly he's taking powerful shots, but he wouldn't be so high Gaethje did not hit him the first strike. He missed the first one and then hit him. The one that hit him the hardest. You mean on the one-two that was going out the, yeah, the, the, like the final one, sequence? He hit him yeah, with the only yeah. the second. The yeah. one that really put him out, though, is the one on the way down. Yeah, he's like Gaethje, like, down, put his yeah. whole body weight into it. Yeah, just, oh, yeah, he drilled put it. Put it right on his chin, too. Yeah, which it was like, oh, great fuck. Punch. It was a great punch right on the bottom. Dude, he was out yeah. for a minute. Dude, did you see? He, he was sitting down. He, was he so tried to out. fight him. He tried to fight him. He when tried to fight him. He tried to hug him. He was, like, going he for the takedown. He tried to fight him, dude. Yeah. He tried to fight him. He was fucked up. Oh, my God. Up, he was fucked man. up. Man, he was fucked up. Like, he was out, out. I'm thinking that one on the chin was just all, kind of like how happened to Bisping low-key. Like, where he's just, like... He put his whole weight into that box because, yeah. like, he leaned into it, like type. It was his precision, his perfect nice. punch right there, man. Yeah. He, he, That's he, what you get, though. Talk shit, out. get hit, dude. Yeah, like, when you fuck. talk, when you talk that kind of shit about, I think a fighter that most people would say is earned the world class Although distinction, fucking, even coming in with losses to yeah, to Poirier in the lightweight division. Alvarez. Can you blame somebody for talking shit? No, I get the shit talking, but there. Got a you gotta back, back it up, up dude. Yeah. Imagine the shit. Well, I don't know. I mean, Connor lost that fight, but he lost it like a man. But anyways, that's that's regardless of this. Vic, I think, should move up to 170, but we'll see what happens. Gaethje, I enjoyed the hell out of that fight last night. Yeah. What's next, really, for him, though? For Gaethje? Yeah. I think he's got to wait in the wings to see how everything we just talked about plays out. So here's why I think best case scenario for him is. He gets the loser of Pettis. That's yeah, just what I was going to say. If he, yeah, he, he gets, gets the loser, loser of Pettis, Pettis Ferguson. And, uh, Ferguson, yeah. Because yeah. normally they like to, well, they used to like to match up winning fighters with winning fighters. But I yeah. think in this scenario, that would make total sense. Especially if it's Tony Ferguson. Yeah. Because Ferguson's going to be coming off that massive win streak. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, Fuck, man, there's some excitement ahead with, with the way this but plays then, out. What if you made a number one contenders fight if Tony and Khabib both lose? Would you be willing to schedule Khabib Tony again? But it's not a main event, and both of them can come in at 156 if they possibly And you have Justin Gaethje on the card as a backup if one of them doesn't yeah. make it. 
Dude, that's like what the you fucking do UFC versus. They like gotta start the, having assigned Uzo backups for Diaz. every fucking fight now. Yeah. They because do. there's been so many dropouts in the last like two years that it's like, fuck, man. The thing is, when they do that, are, what are they paying? Because camps cost money. I mean, for sure. But what are I they don't... paying? Especially when we're talking about backups for high level fighters, high level camps cost even more money. So what's the deal with True. that? I mean, Kevin Lee's foot in his own bill right now. Yeah, but Kevin but Lee is not he's not, a fight. He's, he's not, not given a fight. He wants to go get a fight. Right, right. That's he's trying to set know? himself up on his own. There, he yeah, he's trying to just go get one. The UFC's not asking him. UFC's to like, yeah. Remember, because he wanted Pettis. He announced it on his Instagram that he was fighting Pettis. Right. On the card. He said the UFC's just waiting for him to sign. Come to find out the UFC never fucking sent that contract out. They mm-hmm. sent one to Tony Ferguson and Anthony Pettis. And that fight was finalized the next day. Right. So... Kevin Lee, I, he's very, like, I really, like, uh, I appreciate his willingness to go out there and try to get guys to fight him and really try to get those big fights. But in some cases, it's just not your fight. You know what I mean? Like, now he's going to have to, because whether he shows up at 155 or not at that fucking weight, at that weight, and let's say Khabib misses weight or Connor gets hurt or something like that happens. I guarantee you they're giving it to fucking Pettis or Ferguson. Mm-hmm. They're not. Kevin Lee's on the back burner at this point. No, absolutely, because they all got some steam behind them, too, coming yeah. in. And all the promotion that have been going on for the other fights behind them, too. So, yep, and didn't they announce sure. uh, one of, either Pettis or Ferguson would be the backup? I don't know if they announced it or not, but I think that's pretty logical. Yeah, you know, I don't know. That they would do that. That just makes sense. You know Connor's going to show up because Connor's never not shown up. But Khabib has had a bit of an issue. So Yeah, Khabib's had a real issue. We'll see. I don't think... He had, what, three fights in a row where he was either injured or backed out? Or had or someone missed, else backed or had, out? Or he had a weight issue. Him well. and Tony fucking... God damn, how many times? That's, what, four times? Five times? They were supposed to fight before there was even a fucking title fight. Yeah. Like, fuck, man. They're, they were supposed to fight to determine the number one contender. Twice. And they both won belts Two different then. times. It's ridiculous. And they still haven't fought. But we'll see how this, the aftermath of all of these uh, big lightweight fights should be interesting. I think the yeah, best thing Gaethje be can do is right wait. There. Kind of be like Kevin Lee, although not, not to fill in, but just wait to see, see what plays out and get a yeah. big fight out of this mm-hmm. this upcoming He's shit in, in October, spot, man. Bro. October, as soon as October ends, uh, we'll... Actually, no, more like December, when so we see the fucking Nate Diaz Poria, I think we'll have a real, like, strong, like, idea of what's going to happen in the lightweight division. I really hope that fight happens. I haven't heard any talk from Nate about not showing up anymore, so I hope that, that was just, just bullshit. You know, bullshit, it's just Nate you know, talking just some shit. some publicity I mean, doing thing. Nah, they've already announced that there's been posters, there's been this, there's been that. They're talking right. about possibly... Moving it up to the fucking main event of that card because obviously you have your idea about what's going to happen. You mean my idea about John Jones? It was subsequently said, backed up by Chael Sonnen and Brendan Shaw. Brendan Shaw. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but Brendan Shaw also does say some ridiculous shit like you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're watching the podcast. Thanks, guys. They don't watch this shit. I'm just <laughs> I know it. I can dream, though. Yeah, hell yeah, but no. they did both That's come out the with the same prediction I had, though. <laughs> yeah. Incidentally, I, if y'all weren't aware, I predicted it first. You predicted it for a good ten days before it. Shab and uh, uh, Chael Sonnen. But who predicted them announcing Connor Khabib? Though I did, motherfucker. You did, motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, that was a good. It's it's we're. The end of the year is looking real fucking Yeah, you were right. Sharp, uh, you man. just said we've had a lot of good fight announcements, and, and you're right. There's a, quite a few coming up. Well, uh, now we're talking at the end of the year as well. We've got Cyborg Amanda Nunes. Oh, That's going to be a man, fucking I fight. Like that, I'm man. curious to see how healthy Amanda Nunes' foot is, though. She's over her sinus issues, right? Did she get so. that fixed? Some surgery or something? So. Or was it but just a sickness? The I whole thing was her foot was the reason she was saying she wouldn't sign the bout agreement before. And now she's fighting for the same date that she said that she wouldn't be cleared by. Is that so, right? I, I didn't notice that. Because hmm. she was supposed to. Is she? Are they fighting in December or November? I think it's. I thought it was the end of the year card, the 29th. Oh, then never mind. She was supposed to fight her at MSG, so I'm, I'm wrong. But, I would be mistaken. It's been a busy weekend of fight announcements. Yeah, it's been crazy. And uh, I don't have that on my list here. But that's a fucking fight. Fights to talk right about, there, but that's a, that's a good. 
That's that a good, is a uh, fucking fight. That's a great fight, what do you, man. I what think do you think of that fight? I think it's a good fight for Nunes. I think that shoots her fucking in to stardom if she takes Cyborg If she out. beats Cyborg and the UFC doesn't get behind and celebrate that woman, then what in the fuck? We're in fucking trouble. I... Cyborg's talking about this will possibly be her final fight. Cyborg's tired of getting mistreated in the UFC in her eyes. I'm not saying she has been. I'm saying, but in her view, she definitely has been. She's a tough fighter to promote, though, because you're asking to give so much. You're asking for her to create her own division. You're asking for her to be the main card. You're asking for her to get... She's a fucking... I don't mean, like... I don't know personally how hard she is to work with, but from the outside looking in, you had to create your own division. For her to fight in the UFC. It's got to be tough. It's tough to make fights with someone you don't have fighters to make. There's no one else even in the division. It doesn't show up even on the bullshit yeah. UFC rankings. On the UFC so rankings, yeah. it should just be like, Cyborg, other bitches. <laughs> like, she's she's ridiculous, a, dude. I mean, I can see why they have a hard time finding women to fight. Because she's big. I've well, met Cyborg several big, times. She's interacted big. with she her multiple like 185 times. She's very large. Dude, the first time I, I met and spoke with her was in 2013 at the UFC Fan Expo here. Oh. And so, I mean, it was a long time before anybody had any talk of her being actually in the UFC or in yeah. the USADA. And she was she in a wife beater those, tank those, top those with Tito. Cool. Tito was her promoter at the time. Uh-huh. And I stood right next to her in line because they were not there. They were there as paying customers, you know what yeah. I mean? Because Tito was on the outs of the UFC, but they couldn't yeah. keep him from buying a ticket, right? Yeah. And so we stood next to each other in line, and I was just like, Damn. I was in shock, Jeez. dude. Like she's shock, she was so huge. She looked like she had just of left. Of course, the gym. you got Dana White going. Uh, she was she's huge. like Vandalay Silva if he was a girl. <laughs> she must have been. She must have been Dana way White's in one ninety. She was dude. so huge. <laughs> Dana White's such a dick. He oh. called her Vandalay Silva. Vandalay in a dress. Was a girl, dude. Yeah, that was brutal. That was brutal. <laughs> it is funny. This is what we were talking about before. He just doesn't give a fuck. He'll talk shit about whoever that was brutal. he wants. That was fucking brutal. Oh, it's rough. That, that, that was some Comedy Central roast level oh, yeah. brutal. Vanderlei Silva in a dress. <laughs> brutal. I mean... The signs are like two years later. One, one thing we don't talk about on the show is PC shit, so we're not going to have an argument as to whether or not that was a, a politically correct thing to say. Yeah, and you could say, but, but it was it, it was funny as fuck, dude. That oh, was, was funny. Ridiculous. You can hate on it. And Dana yeah, White, I don't know why you'd dude, say that kind of shit about your own, fighter. your own fighters. Fuck, that's it, she wasn't signed by the UFC at the time, but he knew but eventually still, she yeah. would be, and these words are permanent. Yeah. But that, brutal. This guy, Dana White. Yeah, that's fucking Dana White, dude. <laughs> You know, it's the dick, dude. biggest dick in sports, <laughs> man. Biggest dick in sports. Uh, I guess you got to be to run a, a promotion full of fighters, yeah. a bunch of fucking alpha dogs. Yeah, I mean, true. every one of these people think they're the baddest motherfucker on the planet. I mean, yeah. True. You have to be to get in a cage and fight somebody else. You can't think you yeah. suck. I mean, so. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, but damn, we got other fights too, man. So we got they did Cyborg Nunez, which I like, and yeah. I agree with you. I, I kind of like Nunez in that fight. Yeah, I kind of like think it's a good opportunity for Nunes to really become a superstar. And, and good for Cyborg because no one can say this isn't a legit contender for her. No. Well, and, and she, her last few weren't, I mean, Holly wasn't. No, Holly was legit. Holly was legit as fuck. I, I know that one was legit. That Yana chick, I guess so too, because she beat Tanya Evinger, who she fought before, and they both were Invicta champs at that weight class. It's really hard to call these people, like... Like, I, her first few fights in the UFC, you could be like, yeah, you know, those were, like, genuinely yeah. nobodies. But her her last couple, like, last four fights well, have been fighters. all against either former Invic- Invicta champs or super fights, really, like, with other weight class. Like, what's that other chick that was uh, from Australia? Megan Anderson. Mm-hmm. She's supposed to, she was supposed to fight Megan. her, and then she fucked it up by losing to Holly. You know, like they're they're bring they're trying to bring legit talent over, but it's hard when you have other chicks in the weight class that you're just ignoring that are beating them. Oh, you true. know, because honestly, in in all seriousness, Holly probably deserves a rematch. Megan Anderson, did she, did she even get signed? Or was that a one off? Yeah, no, she's like, on. The, I'm pretty sure because. She's not listed. You'd think she would show up in the featherweight rankings. Can they not put anybody on there? They if they just don't, don't have, have anybody in there because Holly's technically a featherweight, and so is uh, didn't 
Bitch go hair fight a featherweight fight not too long ago or something like that. I don't know, but she she probably could. Yeah, she's <laughs> fucking dangerous. No, I'm just kidding. She get fucked up. She by get her. murked. Oh, dude, she got murked by Ronda. Hey, you, you took think the you're like right out of my mouth, shit, dude. She got Ronda's KO'd by Ronda. Boxing. Ronda's the most over. Can you believe I, she was on the cover of the Ring magazine? It's a sad day. Yeah, Ronda didn't have fuck. no boxing. <laughs> Fuck, man. I look good on the mitt still. Shit. I can't go into UFC. <laughs> you know? Shit. <laughs> she shit herself. Dude, she honestly, my, my, my boxing too. right now, I, I'm dead. See, my boxing is better than Ronda Rousey's right now. I promise you that. I swear. I swear to God. Oh, shit. Move your head. <laughs> right. Have you seen I got that video? movement, son. Have you, ever seen that? Have you ever seen that video? Fuck. Have you ever seen that video? With her in the straight line? No. It's like or with the, with the Tarverdian screen? Yeah. No, yeah. It's just Edmund. And it's like her, her and Travis Brown get knocked out. And the whole time he's just like, hey, move your head. Move your head. Move your head. Move your head. Hey, move your head. <laughs> I have seen that. Oh, it's hilarious, dude. Edmund thinks he could still scrap, dude. Edmund thinks he can still coach. I can't believe he still has boxers coming to him. I don't. What does he? Does he got to be the most dude, persuasive got, motherfucker in person was, or what? Was, the dude I don't who understand. he was coaching who fought Triple G got fucking Smoked. destroyed. That fight's happening too. Pretty Look what soon. he did to Travis Brown. Yeah. I mean, Ronda Jesus could. If Christ. Ronda would have changed camps, man. If Ronda would, would went down to like Greg God. Jackson and been like, you know what, Holly. Oh. God, let's yeah, train. Let's together. train. Let's <laughs> let's do some. Let's get because with some real Holly fucking coaches here. Always was gonna go to forty five, anyways. If like Holly oh. versus uh, yeah, well, and Holly lost the title, so I don't know. I don't know either. Maybe not Greg Jackson because maybe they wouldn't have let her because her and Holly would have been like possibly a rematch soon. But still, you got Mike Perry, Donald Cerrone fighting, and they're fucking right. both fighting Jacksons. I love that fight too. Yeah. Although I do feel a little bad for Cerrone because I yeah Cerrone's a fucking like gatekeeper, bro. He's the fucking. And it hurts me to see that role. Yeah. He's just suddenly that role. That's him now. That's exactly what he's doing. Like if Perry beat Perry's come he's on. Like, hey man, are you ready to be in the top fifteen? All right, fight me. <laughs> you get by me. Fuck man. You, you you might get that vault into the ten even. Yeah, there's been a lot of rumors as long along the lines of uh, with the fight announces as well we had the robbie lawler and uh uh wonder boy thompson yeah, rumor coming out DSPN possibly in card. january yeah. and then uh Paige van zandt supposed to possibly fight then i like Paige. i'd be like to see her back and then the you got leon screen. edwards going around talking about he's fighting jorge masvidal as well like that fight too that's a good that's fight a as well fight right there i mean some of these fights that'd be too. a 170 yeah 170, yeah, 170 yeah, lot. Yeah. leon edwards is yeah, he's edwards is pretty big he's man. pretty good man yeah, he's, he's not good. he's no slouch no but neither is fucking Game Bread, dude. He's no, always Game down Bread to scrap. Down, man. Can't go wrong watching him fight. It's a good matchup as well. Because both those guys kind of have nobody else in the division that's really not tied up right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. But, UFC, like like we talked about last episode, man, because two, three episodes ago we were complaining about the lack of fights and the shitty cards the UFC's yep. putting on. And, uh, well, they've, and, uh, they've really put together some real good cards at these last few yeah, fights. And, and these announcements since our last episode, number mm -hmm. nine, have, have, have really reinforced what we were saying then, that UFC's getting it right here at the end of the year. Yeah. My only question is, is the Derek Lewis fight and Alexander Volko, but we don't know yet, it cost, possibly could be off because I heard Derek Lewis is getting... Some cortisone, sh cortisone, cortisone shots, yeah. and possibly he said he's going to try to train with it, and he's going to do his best to be to not to ha like be able to fight. But then you have that was supposed to be originally announced was the co-main event with Conor McGregor versus Khabib. When mm. they announced that card, that was the co-main. Right, event. right. Now we have last night Anthony Pettis and um, fucking Tony Anthony Ferguson, Pettis, Tony Ferguson yeah. gets announced as the co-main event now. So. Where does that leave Derek Lewis Volkov? Does that push them down farther on the main card? Which, if it is, that's good because that just strengthens the card. Or right, did they scrap right. that fight because Derek Lewis is having back issues again? I hope he's not having back issues. I love watching that guy fight when his back isn't killing him. Yeah, I don't want to see he's him a fight. He's a fucking with a sore world beater again. when he's healthy, dude. Oh, he could put because there's been there's been times where he's getting beat down and he comes back and pulls it out. Sure How many he's did he win in a row? Like days. seven or something a couple yeah. years ago? Yeah, he's got heart for days. And he's just a 
like if you everybody listening or watching, if you don't follow him on Instagram, he's you should hilarious. check it out, man. That, he's that dude's, fucking hilarious. His in, he's an Instagram star. Oh, dude, I mean, he's he wants some entertainment. So funny. And then he does good shit in real Post life. Post some of too, the funniest man. memes yeah. ever. His obviously. memes are on fucking point. hilarious. I, I like to check his Instagram almost every day, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking funny as fuck. Absolutely. Huh? Now we got UFC. Uh, well, back in the fights, we got UFC 228 coming up. Yeah. Which we, we touched on briefly, you know, Till Wibbly, but there's some other fights on there too. We got the flyweight title defense. Finally, the Finally. fucking title defense. Jesus. Finally, man. How long has that division been like? Like it's eight months, eight I believe. Months it's been eight months with nothing since defense. the tough season. I get it, Nico Montana was like a fucking underdog and she had some tough fights and tough and that like she needed some time off but eight fucking months for it's what was brutal. what was it like tonsillitis yeah tonsillitis jesus christ but i don't blame her shevchenko's fucking waiting for her so <laughs> dude bullish shevchenko's one of my favorites yeah i've man, got fucking girl. tonsillitis too if i'm scrapping her i mean like fuck she is something she's, she's a badass of, the thing is but then again with Nico being counted out so much, she's used to being in that like, in that spot. So who knows? What if she is able to pull something out? Well, she's shown that she's got a lot of heart and come from the underdog. But we have really no idea how good she is. I mean, no idea. We haven't seen her on the big stage really yet. It, I'm I'm wondering honestly because if it's going to be kind of like similar, Carla Esparza. That's right? what I was just going to say. Yeah. Very similar to the Carla Esparza season. Yeah. There was better fighters outside of the UFC. That were also being put into this weight class right. after Tough was show. after yeah. Tough was done because now not only did Shevchenko move down, you had Paige Van Zandt being added to that division. You mm-hmm. have quite a few other girls that have done good things in other divisions, going there and having success. So, with that being said, I'm not saying there wasn't great talent in that season of Tough because there was. No, but, but there's just more waiting in the wings. There's other people. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Other people that are waiting who have weren't necessarily able to get that shot to be in that show that are better than. Because look at look at the landscape of even the bantam or not bantam weight, but the uh, flyweight division for, uh, or what the fuck's it called? The strawweight division. Straw sorry. Weight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So right as soon as you get out of how many of those girls that are really in that tough season other than Rose are like really in there? There's a lot of them are declining since There's that not season. A lot. Happened. Some of them aren't even in pa- the UFC. Uh, I anymore. mean, fucking Rose and Carla are kind of the only two that are kind of really. Some still of them in can't there. even get fights, like Sarah Moras or Moraes. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how you say her name anymore because you know why? Because UFC didn't give her a fight for like six months. Yeah. I see her on Twitter like, please give me a fight, Sean Shelby. Yeah, fuck. Like, what do we? Yeah. Like it's only so many fighters. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. But one thing that, like your your point being, like like when Ronda, like they created that tough season around the one thirty fivers. Yeah. Like that was like everybody. Like mm-hmm. they came out and that was the whole division. But yep. with this now, like you just said, because it's in that middle space. Yep. Yeah, There's they got people killers. going up, people going down. All the best fighters aren't on tough. No hell. In fact, not even close. Really. Yep. And no. just because you win the tough title, you might not have faced, have faced even the top five. You may be the first, fuck it, just like Carlo. You may be the first champion ever, but you won't be the last. Yeah, yeah, because like, you're coming out to you're like... You're coming out to some killers waiting in the wings. Just like Carla had fuck, young Jacek sitting there with just, levels above her at the God time. God damn, like, that was a beatdown. Like, Carla's come back and she's improved. Well, then also years, when you look at it too, that was even after beatdown. that season... You want to beat her, and then you want to fuck two other chicks that were from other the other uh, promotions that came to the UFC mm-hmm. as well as her next two title defenses. Right, it wasn't anybody. It from wasn't the show. people from Tough. Oh. Nope, nope, nope. Now, interestingly enough, though, ultimately Rose from from the show yeah, does come in, taking and over the division, the one to dethrone. But she had all this time to evolve, and we've all yeah, known but she for was, a long time. Yeah, exactly. Rose she is a wasn't that fighter. same fighter in Tough. No. And Rose is a special fighter. But, she has been, and she's put in the work to change and, and grow. See, and my thing was, if Carla didn't get robbed in that one fight, we could be seeing Carla versus Rose to really see who's evolved the most after that fight. Yeah. After, I mean, well, they fought well, Carla tough. might be able to have uh, that say, because, you know, she was one of those fights that was announced. They announced Esparza versus Tatiana Suarez. That's who's not a, a big enough fight for her, though, because now they're both mean coming wrestler. off a loss. Yeah, Suarez has got that wrestling game, though. I mean, I saw her on her tough season. She's Suarez strong. just lost to Andrade, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's 
who was also on this card coming up, she's fighting Carolina Kovacavich, which is honestly probably the number one t- number one contender fight for Rose's belt. I like that fight. It's really a, like it's a finesse striker versus a power striker. And draw just be. I mean, she's coming down from a uh, heavier weight class. Didn't she drop all the way from? No, she, that's her weight class. Is she. It? Earlier in her career, she did that, but she's fought here like it's last, been a minute for like now? four or five fights. Okay, I'm just thinking back to early in her career. Yeah, but yeah, no, she's tough, man. She's a fucking she. She's another one of those similar to when that with Cejudo DJ situation, where Joanna was champion and beat so many people that they'll never get another chance. Andrade gets her second chance, and Carolina too. Gets her second chance if uh-huh. they fucking win this fight. And they get their next title chance because if Joanna was still champion, this fight would not have the same implications. No, it has not now. at all. Yeah. Because I don't think Joanna gets another shot unless she fucking goes on murderer's row. Is TJ she... Dillashaw mode where she just goes and wins five fights in a row inside two years, then she gets another title shot. Is a fan of Young Jacek. I'm disappointed that she's not moving up to 125. Like, yeah, I, would, I, I, would, thought, I, would I thought really that would have like been that. best for her. I yeah. think Valentina Shevchenko going down kind of influenced that, though. Because Valentina could, had she, their past. And, and she does seem to have Valentina beat her number. Up. Yeah, more than once. Yeah, I think it was like three or four times. Yeah. But that's a different sport. It is a different sport you know, at a different time. Still, Fighters grow still, and evolve. But... Both of them are high-level <clears throat> striking offenses. They're not grapplers by any means. No, no. Which I think is part of why, like, uh, someone like, un, like, <clears throat> um, what the fuck's their name? The Brazilian chick who just beat Esparza. Um, Claudia Gadelia. Claudia Gadelia. Yeah. She could really do some damage to some, if she were to move up. Because there's a lot of strikers there. There's not a lot of, like, jujitsu wrestling fight, the fighters there. Because you got, like, Paige, who's now in that higher up echelon in that division and so yeah. so there's a lot of strikers there not a lot of wrestlers or jiu-jitsu practitioners you know so i think that she there's a see there's like a lot of girls that can move up or down because they're that's such a flexible weight class that's like unlike the men's division where you have 55 to 70 if there was a 65 yeah the guy's got that big gap right well there. that's why i think a 65 division don't. would make so much sense because that 65 division would fill up just like similar to the to the women's division, you know, right. where you have the fill-ins because there's a lot of there's a big gap, you know. It's a strange situation. But that 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 is an interesting fight with uh, with Jessica and Carolina. What else yeah. did we get announced? Uh, we got that Jimmy Rivera versus uh, John Dobson. Awesome. Big fucking fight for Dobson. He needs Boy, this. Boy, is it ever. And Jimmy's a big no one for Jimmy joke. too off his yeah. first loss. Yeah, coming off he was nineteen and zero, coming off his first loss. Yep, which yeah. honestly is bullshit because you know he lost on the fucking the beginning of the Ultimate Fighter, and but it doesn't count as a professional right. loss. Right. So it's bullshit. He technically has one. Yeah, because those are him. exhibition the fights. Exhibition, yep. yeah. So technically he has another loss, but I, I hate to put him down like that, but. <laughs> It's, it's true. true. You cannot deny the truth. No, you can't say it wasn't a fight. It even had consequences. I'm pretty, pretty sure he pretty got big KO'd ones. too. <clears throat> and he got KO'd the other mm. couple months ago. Right. Quick, quick turnaround after getting KO'd. To be honest, I don't like that either. But because what? When do you, he got KO'd? I want to say in start of July. Some more around then. This is September eighth is the date on this one. Hmm. Was his knockout bad? I could. I thought he got starched. Like I didn't I think know. he'd. If it was James Vick style, then I mean, you need to tape. But like then six again, months off, but man. then again, you see a guy like Frankie got fucking flattened by Brian Ortega, and then turns around and fights Cub. What a month later? People uh, are it's Frankie's brain. But yeah, I mean... fuck. But yeah, very similar situation. Jimmy here, quick turnaround for Do- Dobson. I think this is. This is big for him, man. He's big time. This is where you either put up and you show that you're you're a legitimate threat in this division or you move the fuck back down. Yeah. Because there's plenty of guys <clears throat> at 25 he could give hell. And now with DJ being dethroned. He's, yeah, he's got life in that division again too. So. Unless he beats Rivera because Rivera, 
although losing some steam, is still a top ten guy mm-hmm. who has a lot of a lot like of steam behind value him. behind a but win good. over him. Yeah, you know, for sure. That's a fucking good fight, though. I think the ed- I give the edge to Rivera, but I think Dobson could easily put him on his ass. He's got power, and it translates up to one thirty-five for sure. I think I think twenty five is where he belongs though. I do too. He's small. I don't know if a loss here does that for him because he could be looking at getting released if he loses this fight. Because what that'd be four fights in a row that he's lost, yes. or four out of five. Four possibly. out of five, I think. Yeah, three out of four. It's something of a bit of a streak for yeah. a guy with a lot of talent. Well, and well, he came into this bantamweight division with a quick KO of uh, Gambirian. Mm-hmm. And then he lost all steam after that. He had some big fights where he just didn't show up. And everyone had the idea that he was going to be the one to come in this division and challenge Dillashaw with already having a win over him. But he wasn't able to take care of the work that he needed to in front of him. And he kind of, I think, overlooked a lot of guys trying to get that Dillashaw fight. Yeah. And it really cost him in the end. Like, that loss to Munoz really hurt him. Like you can't be losing fights like that. No, you can't lose that fight. No um, fucking way. Absolutely not. I'd like to see him back on the flyweight. The, especially flyweight, with the, think, the landscape opened up. It adds so even small. more to the mix. He's, and he's you a, can't, he's I can't imagine he cuts any weight going to no, the No, no. That's his walking around weight yeah. for sure, man. For sure. Yeah. Like maybe he, I think 25 is best for Maybe him, he has to cut a half a pound or something. To get, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. you know, but no, Nothing serious. He's no got real fucking weight cut. big hands. I think... Those twenty five pounders won't be able to take those. After. Take those fucking blows, yeah. yeah. His power translates, man. Hundred percent. Power definitely does. Well, that's a lot of good fights coming up, and we still have slots open for more fights to be announced. Yeah, hundred so percent. That's pretty awesome. There, there should be definitely coming, some man. in the next coming weeks. There should be definitely probably a big one. I think during the till Woodley card. I mm-hmm. think that's where yeah. they announced. They're gonna announce I think that's where they announced huh? the. Yeah, I think you that's mean John they, Jones's return. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. That's probably that's probably John gonna Jones's be when they announce John Jones or return. Connor fights Nate the next month. Oh. No, I'm just <laughs> 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 Connor fights Nate after he's done fighting Poirier. <laughs> hey, you know something? Um, I want to start talking about on this show as it's going to continue to grow. Is this uh, this uh, bare knuckle fight club? Yeah. The springing up and it's Saw got some uh, it's got some, it's got some uh, competition yeah. popping up too like that Chris Lieben Phil Baroni bare knuckles in a different promotion that's not the same one that Beck Rawlings is in oh really yeah it's in a competitive a competitor's promotion uh, that's their big signing yeah. so I like the so it's not the bare knuckle fight club itself it's I'm not sure what the the other one's called which I thought it was so I, I, found, I found that out called bare knuckle somewhere. fighting. Hmm? I think it's just called Bare Knuckle Fighting. I think it's well, the one last night is Bare Knuckle Fight Club. Like, that's the title. Like, yeah, I think the other like, one's just Bare Knuckle Fighting. Yeah, fight. like BFN. Yeah, bare, yeah. yeah, or BK, BKN, Bare Knuckle yeah. Fighting. BKF. Jesus Christ. <laughs> BKN? Like, what am I saying? Um, I didn't watch the event last night. I'm going to try Dude, and catch Beck it here. Beck is a here. fucking beast. But Beck Rawlings won again. And I find it interesting She's that both... Chance. Both of her fights in there are against boxers, like yeah, like pure crazy. boxers. So she's going in a bare knuckle fist fighting against pure boxers and she, winning. She law she got cut after losing to Paige, right? Yeah, yeah. And she so, talked a lot of shit. She was like a pain in the UFC side. Really was it? Yeah, if Strange. I remember correctly. About what? I don't recall it offhand, but she wasn't like a Dana White favorite, to, oh, my, okay. to the best of my knowledge. But I'm really digging like this bare knuckle shit. Be. Like Chris Lytle came out of retirement fights last night and just destroys that dude. From what I've read, I didn't um, see that. And I, I, I like this. I'm liking the bare knuckle things. I oh, mean, Chris Lytle. Yeah, I did yeah. actually hear. About yeah, that. man. I thought you were saying Chris Levin. <laughs> no, no, no. Chris, uh, Chris Lytle coming Chris out. Chris Lytle. Yeah, I did see that. And uh, I don't, I don't hate that so much as I, I'm, you know, I kind of rag on like the Chuck Liddell fight, but this, that's I just MMA feel like it's one of those, Ortiz it's one of those Bellator. things though that it's kind of gimmicky, and I don't know how long it's gonna last. It's a little gimmicky, but it's also not because it's just, it's just boxing without the gloves, you know. Yeah. But 
and it's, it's pure. It's just going like, to be tough. To it's a tough sell in I the was, United States. I watched an interview. Well, it was before the success of this first one. You know that first one got one hundred and fifty thousand pay per view. Really? Dude. That's some UFC event yeah, level that's, shit that's right there. Solid. With Fuck. very little promotion. Hell like, yeah. That's how all these competitors sprung up. Like this Chris Lieb and Phil Baroni fight sprung up because everybody saw the success. And really? I watched an interview with the uh, the head of the Bare Knuckle Fight Club promotion, and he was saying that like. Mississippi or wherever it was or Wyoming wherever they held it that first one was the only state and all these other states said no and then they had that that's event. what I was saying that's what I was all thinking. these other states are saying yes now. I was thinking a lot They're of calling them up well I'm like, thinking you want to do an event here I was thinking more of <clears throat> along the lines of possibly doing uh, like Bellator does on uh, reservations and stuff like sure that. Well, they're, they're getting steam now to the point where not only do they are states opening up to them, competitors are putting, like, yeah, we're going to do this, too. Well, that's kind of what happened with so, Bellator, because Bellator was kind of like a low-level, like, only in, like, a lot of right, Indian Right, and the cream kind of rose then, to the top, yeah. Yeah, now they're kind of, like, have some actual superstars, and before they were almost seen as, like, legacy level. Now they're, like, really up there, it's like, yeah. really competing with UFC at this point. It's very similar to when... Uh, Strike Force was around. They're almost at that level. Yeah, Bellator's right there, and I don't think this will ever grow into competition because it's technically a different sport. But I yeah, think I but, think there might be a market for it because this yeah, guy, but you could definitely see some MMA fighters who can go into it just absolutely. Based off of, like and this this one that Rawlings is in, he said specifically like they will they will only accept professional yeah, fighters. Like they're not that. they're not going to sign like an NFL star to come no. in and fight bare knuckle. They're not doing the celebrity stuff. It's professional fighters yeah. only. Which so, is good. It legitimizes yeah. the competition. Yeah, and it helps them get licensed in other places 100%. and get more pay per view deals. It makes it more of into a sport than, uh, than like, a, you know, like a sideshow. So hopefully, um, I'm gonna find some replays of that event. I'm mean, sure it's or some video. I want I want to check them out and maybe watch the next one, and we can start uh, talking about that a bit on the show too. Cause, yeah. Because that's pretty dope. And I'd be down. For you sure. know, that sounds like a good idea. Cause, you know, it's we always talk about what really happens to a guy after he leaves the UFC and no one knows about all these like smaller little companies out there that it's another avenue where guys don't have to go to the UFC. Right. The UFC is probably UFC Bellator. Like that is the fucking, you know, that that's the Super Bowl. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's the premier league. Yeah. But when you're talking about guys who are in legacy and like all these like smaller little uh, or even tough enough and shit like that, you know, like even at the lower levels, there's so many small companies out there that don't have a big name but have great fighters. Yeah, they got great, great fighters. fighters doing good stuff. Yeah, yeah. and it's when guys, you see someone like Beck Rollins get behind a company like that yeah. and become like the face. Yeah, because that's what they're calling her the queen of bare knuckle now. Yeah. It's already latching on. Well, wasn't she know? doing it before she was fighting MMA also? She might have. I'm not yeah. certain. I've Pretty always sure liked Beck, but I don't know a whole lot of her history. I mean, I got to know her a bit mostly on the show yeah. when, when she was on there. I mean, I'd heard of her before, but mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a fan. I like her. I like her punk rock yeah, attitude. She's, she's a single mom. I'm a single parent. I get it too, you know. But, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm digging the bare knuckle things, and I, and I like it seeing a guy like Lytle who I don't want to see him come back in MMA. Dude. No, fuck no. You know what I mean? But something like this? Okay, yeah, dude, you can, you can have a bare knuckle fight. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hating that at all. I'm not that worried about injury. It's not like, it's only the fists, you know. It's, yeah, it's fuck like, it. I'm down. I think it's cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad, I was glad to read that, that that's blowing up a bit. I'm glad that event last night seems to have uh, yeah, it's good to see. been successful. It's good to see that it's Beck not necessarily so belt. much like saturation, but it's more to see like, more avenues of watching like fights because yeah there's tons of fighting styles that people out there would love to watch that just aren't available you know? absolutely dude yeah and yeah if, and being you know like us and and people who i assume are watching and listening you're if you're a fan of combat sports it's not just mm -hmm. and there's so much more than just the ufc Fuck yeah. and there's so much more than just mixed martial arts and there's so yeah there's so like, much more than, exactly there's wrestling muay thai kickboxing everything yeah, that's included everything. in mma on the outside looking in is also very interesting to watch and people don't really get to watch it. like wrestling is like really like it's like i love to watch it but i have to jump through so many hoops just to watch anything yeah 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 it's, they make it hard mm -hmm. and with the success of this bare knuckle it's like 
Um, I've always been fascinated by it because to me, it's like the purest form of boxing. Okay. I come from a boxing background and I'm fascinated with the idea that would someone like Floyd Mayweather even be able to fight bare knuckle boxing who relies so much on his gloves as part of his defense? What Mm -hmm. the fuck would happen if you had them tiny little fists, man? Yeah. Like, I would just, I don't know, maybe well, he'd have the same the success. Game because maybe you kind of got to pick I, your punches in a bare knuckle fight. Yeah, it's totally different, man. You can't like, fucking punch somebody with your middle knuckle. You can't knuckle just in be like forehead. this. You like, can't, this isn't you, saving you, man. Yeah, and then also, in like, think of it in like a UFC situation. You can hit somebody with a glove on, like, in the fucking, like, you know, hard parts of their head. When it's bare knuckle, you hit someone with the hard part of your head. Well, uh, part you're of their more head, aware you're of fucking that. Yeah, you're not broken. That's you why they I mean? say that there's actually less injuries because you don't have that you confidence that the gloves give yeah. you. You're like, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna like, I'm not yep. gonna punch his fucking forehead because yeah. I'd like to keep my hand. Keep it on the chin. You know, right. <laughs> you know, fuck. I don't know, there's, there's good stuff coming in combat sports, and I'm excited oh, yeah. that over these past few episodes we've been able to kind of go from kind of like being a little bit bummed, like, is WME gonna just destroy the UFC? To yeah, there's being definitely like, some. Uh... It's definitely a good time to be an MMA fan right now. Yeah, Bellator's got the tournaments going on again, which we're both UFC's fans of. UFC's got Connor back, possibly UFC's John Jones, back. Brock Lesnar, DC. Oh. Fucking things yeah, are rolling. Man. We it's got even. Stuff, we dude. even got lower level guys. We got Pettis looks good right again. We got okay. Ferguson's back. We got Darren Till, Woodley. This is fucking great, dude. Man, wait till this uh, Bellator welterweight tourney starts. We got yeah. the heavyweight tournament. We got, pretty soon we're going to have Chael versus... Uh, Fedor, Fedor which you know is just going to be awesome in the build up, anyways, well, man. That's what people don't realize. We got Nate, or not Nate, uh, we got Connor Khabib one weekend, but then we got Chael Fedor the next weekend. I know, it's great, man. I didn't even realize that. Are you serious? We have it's Connor the 13th, one weekend. Isn't it October 13th? Oh, the... God, it is. It's the 6th and the 13th. You're right, dude. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Who 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 doesn't love that? Yep. Man, where's that Chael Fedor fight being held at? Uh, I'm pretty sure. In don't know. <laughs> I think in LA. There's only so much we can keep up with as far as yeah. bite locations that far into the future, but yeah. man, I don't feel like grinding this right now. I'm just going to jam it in this pipe. Um, man, that's dope, dude. I'm yeah. excited. Man, that's been a pretty good episode, man. We talked about a lot yeah. of pretty cool fights coming up. Yep. Man, if, if you're watching, we'd love to hear what anybody thinks about any of the fights we talked about in the comments, man. Hit us up. Hell Let yeah. us know. Um, Drop a comment. Yeah, we're excited don't to be. Don't be a dick about it. I'm just <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, it's too funny, man. We're just trying to have a good time here. We love fights. Hell yeah. We love weed. We love living in Vegas. Fuck yeah. We're gonna be hitting this Slimer. Morning, Ray, son. If you're watching on uh, on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes. Get on Instagram, rating. follow us yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, if you go to SWATMMA.com, you'll find links for everything. Yep. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. It's been a good time. We're going to keep on smoking this weed here. We hope you're smoking some fucking good weed, too, right? Yep. We'll hear Stay you next time for the next fights. Peace. Later.